I can't believe we're getting the real Terminator 3 in Terminator 3 Dark Fate. But did you know that a few weeks back we covered the real Terminator 3? I remember covering Terminator the real Terminator 3. Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. And then we covered the real Terminator 3, Terminator 2 3D Battle Across Time. Well, thank God we've covered all but the real this Terminator week, What? We're covering the real Terminator 3, Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles, the TV series. In my opinion, mm. the best Terminator 3 that there has been. I think you might be right. I went back and I watched every episode of this show. I wasn't really planning on, yeah, and I uh -huh. knew it ended on a cliffhanger, mm -hmm. but I got sucked right into this 10-year-old show, and at the end when it ended, I went, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was similarly, I was like, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch episode one mm. and then jump to the final one just to see how it evolved and to see if and it made any it sense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, no, no. And then, but I was compelled. I'm like, I'll watch like the first three or four. Yeah. So... And then I jump to the end. And I think for our efforts, that should definitely get a like on this video, no doubt. I think so too. But yeah, there's some stuff in this show that I think it is limited by budget, but a lot of things really, really work well. For one, some of the special effects and the new elements of the law look really great. For example, the first Terminator who shows up to kill John Connor. So one of the key villains of this is Cromarty, and he turns up at John Connor's school and you see him kind of cut open his leg and he pulls a gun out and you see like the mechanical components like sliding away inside of him. Is that a sly Robocop reference? I wonder if Maybe it, it might is, be. yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, they are connected in some universes, aren't they? Mm. Robocop v Terminator. The good one and then the not good one, the comic. I love though how the Terminator stops to turn around and go, class dismissed. There's moments like that where I think they're so efficient and so like bare minimum yeah. in terms of things they have to do. They even talk about that in the making of where Things like the Cameron character won't even brush the hair out of her face because they're so like, I'm going to do the bare essential things to kind of function. Yeah. And I think maybe the pilot, they were still testing a few oh, things 100%, out. Oh, 100%, yeah. But there is some excellent practical stuff. I mean, even when they eventually kill Cromarty, I don't know if you saw this episode where they blow the side of his face off and you see the mechanics inside there. Mm -hmm. And it actually looks... Like, movie quality terrific. I'll talk about some, like, not as good special effects later. Uh -huh. Whenever they show, like, a fully CGI Terminator, it's never great. No. But again, it is TV budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 10, 11 years <laughs> ago when, when this actually came out. How did you feel about the new elements this introduced? to the franchise. I enjoyed the fact that it started in 1999, so mm -hmm. like a couple of years after the events of Terminator 2. Yes. But before the events of the real Terminator 3, Terminator 3. Yes. Uh, no longer canon in this universe. I don't know which one you're referring to. But doesn't it, matter. Yeah, but at the, at the end of the pilot to this, they time travel forwards. Yeah. I, I enjoyed that there were some mysterious elements in the future. Like there seem to be different factions in the future. Yes. That are, that are building towards stopping the apocalypse or, or restarting the apocalypse. And one team has sent back a time displacement core, yeah. send them forward into the future. Yes. I thought that was very cool. I enjoyed the fact that uh, their first nemesis, Cromati, at one point gets absolutely wrecked. De-skinned. Like, De-skinned, de loses his head, yeah. and then over the span of several years, it seems, puts himself back together. Like, he, he reattaches his own head, yeah. and then he... Then he goes to a scientist and gets like a like he forces him to build a synthetic skin mm. formula, and then he gets turned into like this skin golem, yeah. like covered in gross human flesh. And then he goes to a plastic surgeon and gets himself a, a beautiful human face again and a sweet head of hair somehow. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think those elements of self repair are really great because we kind of get hints of that in the other movies. Mm. Like they kind of when they've been injured, they'll cover it up with like a glove, like in Terminator Two, or yeah. sunglasses when he when he has the eye injury in part one. Yeah, but I think a lot of, especially like the, the the more recent Terminator movies, infiltration of these dedicated infiltration units lasts about four seconds yes. and then they <laughs> start shooting lasers out of their hands and you're like, maybe you go into deep cover for a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that's an element... Like they're supposed to stick around for years. Well, that's an element though that I think is interesting because there are some... Terminators that show up in this who are doing that. Yep. There's one that gets married and yeah. is just living a suburban life. Yep. And it's interesting to me that they can learn enough and get by enough to trick a person into thinking they're a real person. I mean, you would never suspect that it wasn't a real person, but it's also what kind of lunatic would hang around <laughs> with, with a person like this. Yeah, right. The, I think the time travel stuff of, of going forward which I should point out, they did borrow from uh, T2 3D, the, the ride. Oh, the real Terminator 3. That's right, exactly. Mm, yeah. 
that's really an effort to be like, well, let's not set this in 99 because then we've got to do all the cars and the technology. We've got to, we've got to just make it 2007. We've got to change everybody's hair constantly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What I did like is going from season one, a couple of, you know, a few episodes into season one to the final episode of season two is that John Connor's hair evolves from like floppy down 1999. Yeah. It's kind of Caesar cut to super gelled. Oh my God. 2007 so hair, yeah. That's some Nick Lachey shit happening there. Oh my there. God, you're absolutely <laughs> right. I really also enjoy the Cameron character in this. I think they de kind of human her after the first episode because she yeah. quite convincingly tricks John Connor and she seems much more normal in the pilot episode and then later on there's a lot of like, she gets weirder and, yeah. and more out of places that, and unsettling as the kind of show goes on. And I think, again, that's a, it's like a pilot thing where it's like, well, we're trying out this particular yeah, uh-huh. aspect of it. Yeah, I do really like the element of this, of Sarah Connor's got this ticking bomb, not only in the Judgment Day that's going to arrive in 2011 because it's been pushed back, but she knows in the future she's going to get a form of cancer. Yeah. And it's kind of this running thing throughout the show, which is never really solved. Uh-huh. And we don't know where it's coming from. So we don't know what kind of cancer is. Yeah. She, she works in a nuclear power plant at one point. So she thinks it might be that. She thinks mm. it might be. She ex- ate those plutonium isotopes. Yeah, that could have been it. Yeah. Could have been it. But like, also, isn't there there's exposure a- to Terminators yeah. even themselves? Yeah. yeah. Lena Headey, I think, aside from Linda Hamilton, is the best representation of that character. I mean, there's only been a few, but would you say of the two Game of Thrones actors who portrayed <laughs> Sarah Connor, she is the best one? One hundred percent. Look, I think that movie Genesis is is miscast in a lot of ways. For one. I like the Kyle Reese from the original Terminator because he's muscular, but he's thin because he looks like he's just been living in the sewers eating rats. rats. Mm-hmm. And Jai Courtney is this big buff man. Yeah. The version of Kyle Reese that turns up in this, because they've all been recast, yes. feels more like that version than the one that we got in, yeah, in, right. in Genesis. I think they get a lot of that right. And speaking of Kyle Reese, we of course get Derek Reese, His brother, <laughs> by, uh, played by Brian Austin Green, who's from 90210. That's right, yeah. And I think he's he's quite a good addition to this as well. Well, and I couldn't tell you because I only saw sure. two minutes of him at the end. What I also like is they don't really play with the idea that him and Sarah are going to get together. Like, it's not really a, a thing. Maybe that's something they would have developed as the kind of story yeah, uh-huh. goes on. Uh-huh. But it's just kind of like... We don't have time. Yeah, we're just we're just trying to stop a bloody war, right? I did also feel like what, what was good about this is that it felt like the time war was evolving. Yes. You know, again, that we we're, we're in this situation where supposed yeah. to end the apocalypse when we when we mm. destroyed Cyberdyne, but that didn't happen. So we're at a loose end now. What are we? What yeah. are we kind of doing? What are we even looking for specifically? Yeah, right. Uh-huh. In the age of the internet and the cloud, is a fa- is a fast approaching. Mm. Is Skynet in your phone? Is it a man who's got a computer plugged into the back of his head? It can be many many things. But it is that one, I think. In this instance, <laughs> Maybe yeah. it's never really it, resolved. So properly, initially yeah. in this one, it's a chess computer called the Turk. Well, they think it might be. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then it's like there's a there's multiple like AI that kind of show up over this series and it's also and like it's a Roomba with a gun that's right but it's also like could it even be a Terminator that plugs itself into the system like they just yeah. don't even know where it's exactly coming from and speaking of that time war it's interesting that Derek Reese and his girlfriend from the future Jesse they're from different futures they've traveled back from different alternate realities oh interesting because one of them one version of Derek Reese the mm-hmm. one that she remembers was tortured by this guy who was a grey, which is essentially a human who works for Skynet. I see. And that episode is terrific where they're, they're interrogating this guy. Mm. And she's like, I'm 100% sure this guy's from the future. And he's basically like a Nazi scientist for Skynet. But he has no memory of this guy because he's just not from that time period. Yeah, right. I find that stuff really interesting. And also the fact that there's various factions from both sides who are just doing different jobs it's not all john connor sarah connor it's yeah, like right. it's like well we got to blow up this mainframe or we got to infiltrate this thing or whatever well, you can't you can't bloody build up a, a whole bloody revolution on one emo kidney's mom can you <laughs> no you certainly can't yeah but what i really want to ask you about is you're the world's harshest critic i feel of the t-1000 defect yeah it's really bad i'll uh <laughs> i'll based on solely on what i saw yeah uh shirley manson as what i i believe is the t-1001 yes so it's a slightly more advanced version mm-hmm. of the one we saw in t2 yeah uh who oh Boy. Well, I think because you saw the bit where it turns into like a shield, right? Yeah, she turns into like a she in in order to deflect a large explosion from a from a drone. She turns yeah. into kind of like a a silver manta ray kind yes. of situation, or like a she she puts her arms out. She looks like a maybe like a Virgin Mary statue. Yeah, right. But silver and it does not look great. There's definitely some moments here where, that improve on that. I would say that is the worst kind of <laughs> effect for that character. But uh-huh. there's some other stuff that that doesn't look quite as bad. Okay, I would good. say, yeah. Uh-huh. Just so you know. All right. Yeah. Okay, here's some things that I don't like about this. Speaking of. Um, 
Um, Have I seen most of this? No. Or none of it? Okay, cool. There is an episode. Well, then I'll judge it having not seen it. Here we go. <laughs> There's an episode in season two where Sarah Connor has a dream sequence and it, some CGI cactuses grow out of the ground and then they, they hug somebody and it looks quite terrible. Okay. It's a dream sequence. It sounds like a novelty she bought in like a like a dollar store. <laughs> is there a point where she gets attacked by the big mouth Billy Bass? <laughs> Does that happen? Is that also another dream? <laughs> There's also, even towards the end of season two, Terminators are coming at them. And they're just using handguns on it. Mm. Like there's there's a moment in the pilot where they have like a future gun that they've constructed. That yeah, and then that disappears offline. almost immediately. Yeah, I feel like that's something you'd probably want to source again. Yeah. Or find a weapon that's put it in a different yeah, place or the modern day equivalent of that. Yeah, right. But if you're using a handgun against a Terminator, if anything, you're risking that the bullet's going to ricochet and hit somebody else. Yeah. Including you. I mean, if you. you can't find a bazooka, find that regular gun they used in Terminator Genesis that can yeah. kill young Arnold Schwarzenegger with one bullet. Exactly. And the other thing is that it's very disappointing, and this is not the fault of the show, that it ends on a cliffhanger because it ends with John Connor going to the future mm. and they don't recognize him. And presumably it's because he's been missing for X number of years. So in yes. him traveling to the future, there wasn't a version of him that stayed behind and grew up to then lead the resistance. That's true. So I think that could have been an interesting element that I assume they were going to explore at one and point. A, and at which point he also meets, or he, he at least sees the woman who yes. Cameron is based on, right? That's right, exactly. Which there is a whole episode dedicated to. There was actually a fan campaign in relation to the cancellation of this. Uh -huh. The writer's strike happened between seasons, which I think hurt this a little bit in, mm -hmm. in terms of its return and getting it back on its feet. And, you know, it was a pretty costly show by the time the second season rolled rolled around it went from like 10.8 million viewers to 5.3 which is oh, you know, okay it's, that's, it's a bit, that's a bit of a dip yeah mm -hmm. there was a fan campaign and creator josh friedman dismissed uh, a crowdfunding idea in 2013 because he's like hey i don't i don't own this <laughs> like i worked yeah, on right, it but uh -huh. I, don't, I don't own the it's property it's the terminator franchise that's right but thomas decker who plays john connor who might be my favorite john connor bloody hell yeah I mean, Edward Furlong's like a kid, obviously. Yeah. This is like a slight extension what about of that Nick character. Stahl? Nah. I'm, All right, then. Actually, I've said before, my favourite version of John Connor is the one from Terminator 2 in the future, where you see him, he's just got the scar and he says nothing. Yeah, he says nothing. That's, yeah. that's my favourite version, probably. Uh -huh. But he said, uh, in the end, it came down to this show, or our show, and Dollhouse. And the idea was that this is expensive and Dollhouse is a lot cheaper, so Fox just went Dollhouse. Also, we cancelled Serenity, so we'll just give Joss Whedon another season of Dollhouse. Uh -huh, sure. Which I, I never finished Dollhouse, so I don't know whether that's a good thing or not. I don't know there are fans of that series, but having not seen it, I would have much preferred. Is Summer Glare also three. in Dollhouse? No, you're thinking of Elijah Dushku. I am thinking but of also, Dushku. maybe she is in it. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, yeah. I have yeah. no idea. Uh -huh. The other thing is, I think because this show ended at the start of 2009, and the upcoming release of Terminator Salvation, which also came out in 2009 in, in the mid-year, mm. I don't think would have helped this would being have renewed. Would confused yeah, the general public. Exactly. But quite frankly, which is better? Obviously, it's, it's this, this one, series yeah. because that is a, it's a tough watch, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Good use of squibs in this, also, I must say. Oh, terrific stuff. So right at the end of the final episode of season two, mm. Cameron cops a lot of bullets. And yeah. It's, it's very impressive, actually. The practical especially for TV. Definitely. The practical stuff in this is, is terrific. Like, the makeup effects are, are, are really great. And I like that the, the newly designed, the, the T-888, mm. it's a slight variation on the T-800 where it's got modifications where, like, you can see, if you see its skeleton, it's got, like, pistons in its shoulder so it can, like clean punch through a door or wall much easier. Yeah, right. It's got blades in its thighs, so if it gets you in a grip, it can decapitate you. Yeah, it's, it's got, got a needs cup to, holder. It's got a cup holder in the top of its head. Mm -hmm. All that stuff I quite like, but Josh Friedman, who again created this, he would later go to work on Terminator Dark Fate 2019 with a co-screen story with James Cameron. There you go. Uh, but he did reveal in an interview that James Cameron never watched the show, uh, not because he had anything against it, but he was just like, well, I didn't make this, so I don't care. I'm in a submarine. i got stuff to do. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Now, here's a section of the show that I've decided to start including sometimes. It's called, hey, I can't believe you didn't mention this very specific piece of trivia <laughs> that people are going to mention in the comments if I don't bring it up. But the only reason why, I didn't why bring it up... Why have you, you, you put this? segment in James because I'm sick of people giving me trivia that I already know that I just that I decided not to include because I didn't think it was okay. that interesting or it was blindingly obvious okay so <laughs> what why. what I think if we continue to do the, this segment <laughs> this eventually will contain all human knowledge <laughs> that's right like Skynet exactly I've got two things okay Cameron the Terminator was named after James Cameron yep we I know, know that, that yeah but I think it's worth mentioning because people will tell us people otherwise. will tell us and two Shirley Manson is the lead singer of garbage mm-hmm Two we, things. We're aware. Yeah. We if that. you have any other facts that are blindingly obvious, that I, I, look, we'd love to hear about them as well. Mm -hmm. But I yep. feel like this is a segment that's worth including. Hey, you might be the one person that gives us a blindingly ob obvious fact that we don't know. <laughs> that's right. And then we will praise you and shower you with riches. <laughs> Correct. 
and then you're blocked for showing us up. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, this has been Caravan of Garbage. Believe it or not, we do this every week. You want to hint towards what's coming up next week, Mason? Yes. Well, here's a clip of it. It's very, very good bullshit. Thanks, sir. Also, there's videos here every Sunday, Tuesday and Thursday. So if you do want to subscribe for that, and of course, we've got the previous Terminator 3 videos up on this channel, but we are going to do a podcast episode this Monday on Terminator Dark Fate. The real Terminator 3? You know it's the real Terminator 3. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Yeah, me too, I think. Yeah, it might be a good one. (laughs) Yeah, it might be. I, I can't imagine it would be better than this, but I, you know what? I'd love to be surprised. That I new really Terminator, would. though, going to have a lot of cup holders. You, you know, know, know I mean? it. Four in the head alone. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's why he's got the big divot in there. That's why the, the divot's full. The holding cup. Uh, anyways, I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. <laughs> I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. What do you think of this show? I'd, I'd be curious to know what you think, but also if you've got a suggestion for Caravan of Garbage. Yeah, what's your favourite episode of this, this yeah. show? Yeah, this is the cactus one. Could be the cactus one. <laughs> it probably is. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Grab that gem, you guys. We will see you next week. Goodbye. I went to a fancy ball. It was slippery in the hall. I was afeard that I may fall. Cause I nay had on trousers.